Hi, I'm your host, Roger Monder, and welcome to the final show of Breaking Ground. Our two profile segments will deal with innovation and how it can and has created a substantial amount of jobs. Our first show has to do with peat bog and how it can be used for bedding for the many dairy cows in this province. A shortage of sawdust and wood shavings in this province has forced farmers to look at other alternatives. An experiment to see if processed peat bog would work here is still in progress, but to date, the results are looking very promising. At least the cows seem to be happy with it. Brookfield Ice Cream had its own history of innovation when it was taken over by Scottsburn Dairy Group. That tradition has been carried on, making Scottsburn a world leader in the manufacture of ice cream. Every day, tractor trader loads of product leave the plant on the Marching Road in St. John's to find it being shipped to almost 30 countries around the world. Newfoundland ice cream often finds itself in unlikely countries like Australia, Egypt, China, Ecuador, Portugal, and Saudi Arabia. It's a story you won't want to miss. And we're back in the kitchen for the last time with Anne and Kitty. Kitty is going to have some fun with some old traditional Newfoundland dessert recipes. Are you in the mood for some pudding? Believe me, this is a show you won't want to miss. We'll see you in two. When the dairy farmers in this province have a problem, they don't waste time talking about it. They tackle it head on. Here's a good example. The dairy farmers of this province are a straightforward, no-nonsense group of people who have shown that they're more than capable of making a success of their own farming operations. One reason for that success is that they're willing to experiment with new technology and ideas that are continually on the horizon. The latest challenge that has appeared on their radar is explained by dairy farmer Robert Walsh. About two months ago we started using peat on an experimental basis to see how it would work for an alternate source of bedding. We had uh, some shortages of bedding, which are conventional type of bedding now, or has been, shavings, wood shavings and sawdust. And uh, because the, uh, the lumber market in the U.S. Uh, got weak and the, and the Canadian dollar became a lot more uh, powerful than, uh, than it was in the past. A lot of that market dried up. Therefore, the byproduct of lumber, being shavings, also got scarce and uh, we need bedding of some sort. So dairy farmers of Newfoundland and Labrador took it upon themselves, they were given direction from our producers, to go and find alternate sources of bedding and experiment wherever possible. And one of the uh, types of uh, bedding that we uh, are researching right now is peat. And it's a bit early to say, but it looks good so far. We're quite pleased with it. The cows seem to like it. We all know that you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. Even though peat bog so far has proven to be very beneficial, other materials are also being looked at. John Moores, policy analyst with the dairy farmers of Newfoundland and Labrador, explains. Well, there's been some other analysis done with, uh, with sand and with, uh, with straw. Um, however, you know, it's, uh, it's not cost effective to bring straw in from, uh, from the mainland to, to Newfoundland. And until we become self-sufficient in forage, producers are not going to be producing any of their own grains to, to have the straw for bedding. Um, sand has, has also been tried by, by some producers. Um, it's presented some problems in itself and we're, we're working, also working with producers to help, uh, help alleviate some of those problems and, and you know, diversify our bedding supply. But to date, it's looking good for peat. Obviously the peat bog has to be treated before it's used for bedding. Where is it coming from? We're currently accessing our peat supply for this project from, uh, from High Point Peat, uh, which is uh, Bill Butler's operation in central Newfoundland. And he, you know, he's been able to supply our producers with the certain type of peat that they require. The treated peat bog has a lot of good qualities. It binds well with ammonia and also has other positive characteristics that Robert Walsh is very happy about. It seems to be much more absorbent than the wood shavings. It's not as abrasive, it doesn't seem to be as abrasive, and it, it uh, inhibits bacterial growth, or it seems to so far. We've seen a, a reduction in, uh, in uh, infections and so on in, in some of the cows. 
This peat bog for bedding experiment is almost complete. But there is one other characteristic that has come to light. It seems to be very comfortable for the cows. You know, the initial results that we're receiving from the project is that it's, uh, it's extremely comfortable uh, for the cows and that uh, producers are actually seeing an increased number of their cows spending time lying down, which is, uh, which is good. Let's hope it takes off. I'm sure the cows feel the same way. <laughs> time for another break. Did you know that people in Qatar and Saudi Arabia eat Newfoundland ice cream? Let's see how that happened. Newfoundland has a very dynamic dairy industry. And that dynamic industry has opened up a lot of other doors when it comes to secondary processing in this province. A wide variety of milks, creams and butters are manufactured here, proving that we can compare our efforts favorably with any other province, state or country in the world. Scottsburn formerly known as Brookfield Ice Cream, demonstrates that point on a scale that is quite amazing. Jerry Smith, Senior Vice President, is very proud of his company's success, but is quick to parallel their success with what's going on in the dairy industry. Well, when you look at innovation, we've been an innovative leader in ice cream in Canada. I really feel uh, strongly about that and, and very proud of it. But when you look at innovation, just go look at the dairy farms, you know, same thing. They've invested huge dollars to uh, grow their farms and uh, really put automation, uh, fabulous story of what you see across uh, Newfoundland in the uh, type of investment and dollars spent by the dairy farmers here in Newfoundland. But success doesn't come in a neat little package. We're all given opportunities and Brookfield Ice Cream and Scottsburn have a history of taking advantage of the opportunities they were given. Uh, we really recognize that the demographics were changing uh, in Newfoundland. Uh, there's a lot less kids, ki school kids today versus back in, in the 70s that, uh, that we would know. So we, we recognize that our um, ice cream market was changing significantly. And we had to say, look, if, if we're going to grow as a company, uh, we have to look at a market being outside of Newfoundland and go beyond that, certainly throughout Canada. And in the late 80s, uh, we were exploring different opportunities. And uh, we actually secured a contract to do, you know, uh, many trailer loads of uh, popsicles at the time uh, for a uh, manufacturer in Ontario that had some production capacity issues. And uh, we rallied, we, uh, we supplied product, and it just showed that uh, certainly we had lots of capacity and there was, seemed to be an opportunity uh, to, uh, to probably tap into some market opportunities uh, throughout uh, the rest of Canada. So we started on a process of, uh, I guess, going out and looking at some market analysis, uh, where would be the best opportunities for us to expand, and how we would try and develop a network to get that product into those, uh, into those markets. Scottsburn grew and grew to a point where they could see expanding their markets beyond Canadian borders. To go to that level, a foundation of market research, vision, and initiative had to be in place. Put together investment, risk, and technology, and you get a plant that looks much like this. A lot of the innovation we added in this company, no one else had taken on in Canada. And we just saw it as an opportunity, like I said, in the late 80s, and we're continuing to do it today. And this machine that we put in, uh, I guess the Probably the last uh, machine in Canada similar to that was probably placed uh, five, ten years ago. So you can show the, the level of capability of production innovation that we brought here in St. John's in this plant. It's probably the first investment of its kind in Canada in five or ten years. And it was a significant investment. We went worldwide sourcing the equipment. A person who played a large part in the finding and assembling of this advanced type of machinery was Tom Kennedy, Director of Operations. Tom will give us a quick tour. When we go to make ice cream, uh, the first thing we had to do was draw the mix into our flavor vats. And in the flavor vats we had our flavorings, our colorings and our fruit purees depending upon the formulation. From there we take that product, that mix, and we run it through our ice cream freezer. 
in our ice cream freeze, what we do, we freeze the mix and we incorporate air, uh, and basically that turns it into ice cream. And basically we take the mix from the storage vats, bring it over to our fire vats, and we run it through our ice cream freezer into our extrusion nozzles where we drop it on the plate. And as you can see, as we uh, extrude the ice cream on the plate, uh, the stick is injected and then there's water cut and it drops onto the plate and every bar drops in the exact same position. Uh, from there, the product goes into a hardening tunnel uh, where it's healed for about 40 to 50 minutes at a bit of minus 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, from there, the bars are taken and brought into our AHS system where they're brought along, dipped in chocolate, dipped in nuts, and also allow time to dry. From there, it goes, a robot takes it and drops it into our multi-lane wrapper, which is 12 wide, and basically into an opalite wrap, which basically takes the product, uh, seals it, and then the product's taken by another robot and brought onto a conveyor belt where it's accumulated for packaging. It's all pretty impressive. And it's these incremental improvements and advances that have opened up even more national and international doors. To date, Scottsburn produces over 250 different products and ships them to 29 countries around the world. The ice cream market is a world market. It's a, it's a great market to be in. I mean, I, I love ice cream. And, uh, and uh, it, it is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great industry to be involved with. Uh, what we have to do is continue to do the things we've done the last uh, 10, 15, and 20 years, and we've done very well, is to look at the market, what's shifting, and where do we have to be to sort of be at the forefront there on equipment and investment. And, uh, you know, I think you constantly got to be looking not only at your market, look at where I guess the products in the market, whether it's the competitive products that are out there, where the world markets are going, what trends are taking place, uh, visit plants around the world, visit uh, supermarkets around the world, look at the trends, look at the products, go to trade shows, participate there and really get a good understanding of what's happening in the market. Because that's really the driving force and then you need to be there with the equipment that complements that. But at the end of the day, innovation is what's made this company uh, grow the way it has the last 20 years and innovation is going to take us to another level 10, 15 years down the road. Now that's quite a story. When we come back we'll be in Ann's kitchen and I'll let her tell you what's in store. We went through the reissue of this cookbook, The Treasury of Newfoundland Dishes, and we've got a couple of pudding recipes for you right after the break. Who's for afters? Well, Kitty's going to show us a couple of desserts that were and still are popular to eat in this province. Hi everybody, I'm Ann Budgel. Welcome to my kitchen. Kitty Drake is here and she's got the Treasury of Newfoundland dishes. Yes. Brand new out after 50 years of being uh, out of print. Right. There it is again. Yes, here it is again and it's uh, full of all, all old recipes of Newfoundland presented by Newfoundland women. And I have to say, Ann, it took me back to my days on Exploits Island. Uh, I looked at it. Uh, it's got a lot of really nice basic recipes. A uh, little bit heavy on the dessert side, the sweet side. Which is common with Newfoundland community yes, cookbooks. Absolutely. I mean you needed things to fill people yeah. up with and what better to fill them up with. And you know plus I think uh, women who are doing most of the mm -hmm. cooking, I don't think they thought they needed a recipe for how to cook oh, a chicken or cook heavens, a piece of no, meat or cook a fish. No, no. But they wanted a recipe for making cookies and right. squares and breads and mm -hmm. things like and that. And your ingredients uh, mm -hmm. were limited. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we can get everything, but back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, you couldn't get very much. Well, you've chosen some puddings, I see. Yes, so. I chose puddings because uh, when I was on exploits, we had puddings all the time. I, my neighbor, Ruby Jeffries, was always boiling a pudding in a bag or making a figgy duff or whatever. So I really kind of like puddings, and um, I decided that we would do puddings. And so I, you learned from a master then? I did learn from a master, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. And um, I chose two puddings. Uh, one I chose because it was called... 
One bowl plain pudding. And, and this is the bowl. It couldn't be any plainer. So What's we'll just, in here? We'll do this one first. This is a cup of flour, mm -hmm. two teaspoons of baking powder, a little bit of salt, and two tablespoons of butter cut in. And no sugar. No or sugar. No spices. No spices. No raisins. No nothing. Okay. Couldn't get much plainer than no, that. No, you couldn't. And then you put in milk mm -hmm. until you get a nice soft dough. We may need a little bit more there, Anne, uh -huh. but uh, you mix that up and we'll see. Okay. Uh, plain as plain can be. Uh, this is a this is like a baking powder biscuit or yeah. or uh, a dumpling. Yeah. Uh, you know that you would put on top of a pea soup, uh, except that we are going to steam it. Okay. That's it. I All think right. uh, get that in, and then you just spread it along the bottom of the bowl. That's right. Give it a good whipping there. Spread it around. My gosh. Or you could glue wallpaper on uh, the wall. Now, now. <laughs> uh, I do, although I do imagine that this was uh, done by a woman with a lot of children yeah. and they were hungry and she said, I've only got flour and baking soda or baking powder and but, jam. Oh, uh, that's right. And we've got some lovely crocs yeah. of jam yes. and some other and garnishes. Molasses, Cody, and a minute. Okay, so now we're ready to steam this. Now we've got a boiler here, real nice boiler. Mm. And it just so happened, wasn't I lucky, because I just found that I had this rack. You were lucky. That fits uh, perfectly in the bottom, and most, it didn't come with this boiler. No, most people don't. And if you don't, no. uh, just put a couple of canning lids on the bottom to yeah. set it on. You just want to rise it off the bottom of the pot. Okay. Or I have even used a cloth. Okay, so it goes in there. It goes in there. And we have to put... Uh, then you have to put in water about halfway up, yeah. which you're eventually going to boil. And you have to cover the pudding. So find a plate. Yep. Yeah. That fits over the top, keeps the steam in the container, right. and then the lid on it, and, and then put it on the stove, bring it to a boil, boil this one rapidly for 25 okay. minutes, and it's done. All right, and we're putting that one aside. Right. Uh, you did that pudding, and I, this is it, although I, you added... Yes, I decided I couldn't go quite plain, mm -hmm. uh, so I happen to have some dried cranberries, and uh, I think that this pudding does have great possibilities, but I think it needs to be... Fancified right. a bit. I think. However, we're going to try. I want, I want the sauce. What have you got in the? Uh, this, the is sauce? Ma this is this uh, is molasses Cody as okay. I know it, which is molasses, a uh, little bit of vinegar, and butter. Vinegar. Mm -hmm. oh. I have always put vinegar in my molasses Ooh. Cody. Again, maybe it was Ruby okay. next door who taught me that. Okay. Go kidding. So I'm just going to pour some of that all over this, mm -hmm. and then uh, we can try it. And it'll soak up a fair amount of molasses Cody. Well, I Cody, would say I yes yeah. that you could probably. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead, Anne. Corner section here. And we'll see what we... The corner of the circle. Certainly nice and light yeah. looking there. It's got a biscuit feel to it though, eh? Yes, mm. I would imagine. Mm. It's not bad. Not bad? Mm -mm. Not bad at all. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, the youngsters would be glad to have that when they got home from school. Right on, mm -hmm. right on. Mm. You're out of bread, you're out of everything, mm. you make a plain mm -hmm. one bowl pudding. Honestly though, Kitty, I think the molasses saves that one. Oh God, yes. Mm. <laughs> okay, now, now this, tell me about this one. It's a glossy, different look to it. Yes, this together. is this is the other end. This mm -hmm. is much more work. Uh, this was called an apple pudding, mm -hmm. uh, but it had a suggestion of using half apples and half partridge berries, which I did. And you made up a um, sort of a pie crust with baking powder in it, so it's sort of a, a richer uh, biscuit. And you took two thirds of it and rolled it out fit it in your basin, okay, and then you chopped up, peeled and chopped up uh, apples, added partridge berries and some sugar and butter, and you put that in on top yeah. of the dough, and then you took your last piece and patted and it And you out, seal it. And you sealed it. Okay. So that you, it's kind of like having a pie in a bowl. And then you steam it in the same and way. And then you steam it, but this one steamed for two hours. So it's like a big, huge dumpling. Like a big, huge fruit Filled dumpling. Filled dumpling. Will you cut a little piece of that, yes. please, madame? Let's see. Uh, I want to see how well this one worked. I'm very hey, curious hey. about this. Did you ever make this before? Nope. Uh-uh. Okay. No, I'm a, I'm a brave cook here. Look at that. Very fruity look to it. Oh, oh yes. Oh, uh, now I think that one yep. might uh, be the winner of possible. the day. Probably I would serve it with some cream, but mm -hmm. um, see what you think. Mmm. Mm hmm. We're sharing fork. Yes. I like it. Partridge berries. Mm. Mm hmm. That's a good one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a good one. So it was cooked in exactly the same way. I don't know. Cream, I think you're right. It doesn't obviously need any more sweet sauce. No, no, I wouldn't do that. Of all cream. the lovely fruit mm -hmm. inside. I'm going to turn it around here 
so the camera can see how pretty that is. That is, is a gorgeous It thing is pretty. It's very nice. Mm. That is very nice. Would you make that one again, Kitty? Yes. I think so. Yes, I'd make that one again, absolutely. Yeah. Would you make that one again? Mm, probably maybe not. not. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm a little bit more <laughs> elaborate yeah. in my life. Yeah. So. And it's a great way to use fruit. And um, Oh, yes. It's a, and you could serve a lot of people with yes. that pudding, couldn't yes. you? Because oh, yes. It's pretty rich. They I wouldn't guess. need a big slice. No. And, yeah. it, and with some whipped cream or ice cream. Ice cream? Yeah. It would be very nice yeah. with that. All right. Well, that's delicious, uh, Kitty. Thanks very much for going through the, the treasury of Newfoundland dishes. More than welcome, I think you man. picked out one uh, gorgeous winner here and yes. one... Uh, not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kitty. You're welcome. Well, that's our pudding show. Thanks for watching. Personally, I still like a slice of lassie bread and a cup of tea. Well, that's it for us. We've been delighted and honored to have been able to bring you agriculture stories from all over this beautiful province. Well, there you have it. Breaking ground, showing us all the dynamic side to the agricultural industry in Newfoundland and Labrador. And remember, Buy local. It's good for you. I'm your host, Roger Mondra.